Hey folks, uh, good day to you. VM Explorer here, and in today's uh, video, I just wanted to go through my new uh, dream workstation, my Generation 8 uh, workstation, and some of the things I've been uh, doing on it. Uh, if you're interested in the actual hardware layout, uh, if you go to uh, you know vmexplorer.com and go to Home Lab Bomb or Build of Materials, you'll find a full list of all the componentry I have in it. So there's uh, two different uh, settings here, or uh, two different sections, sorry, here. Uh, one is the Generation 8 uh, ESXi host, not the one we're talking about today. Uh, the one we are talking about is all the way towards the bottom here, and that's the Generation 8 uh, VMware workstation. So it's uh, basically a very large uh, setup. You know, there's a lot of things here. And of course, I didn't start out this way, nor did I buy all this stuff all at once. Uh, a lot of the, these uh, components were through time, right? So different things I've been able to carry along and evolve this through different generations to get to this. And that's kind of why I'm calling it my uh, dream uh, workstation because it, it essentially is. I mean, it's got a lot of RAM and it's got a lot of processor and a lot of goodness going on based on Windows 11, right? And it does uh, quite well as we're going to see real quick. So if you're interested in the hardware I'm using today, uh, this is what it is. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So first off, let's talk about the uh, kind of uh, layout of the system. Now, what I've done is I've uh, started off with uh, getting the system and the hardware all together, right? Then installing Windows 11. Once Windows 11 was installed, right, uh, I then laid on Workstation. One of the first challenges I had when, when installing Workstation or the VMs on Workstation, right, uh, were uh, that I couldn't do a uh, nested or a VTXD uh, virtualization. And that was because uh, Windows 11 had installed Hyper-V. So I had to go back through and disable everything Hyper-V for this to work. So that was kind of tip one, right? Get Windows 11 installed, get all the Hyper-V off it. And uh, there were like 10 different ways to get rid of it all. But <laughs> eventually I was able to get it all off the system and get it operational so I could do uh, nested ESXi hosts on the system. Okay, so Windows 11's done, workstations installed. Then I start uh, setting up my uh, ESXi host. Now, uh, the current version of uh, workstation uh, doesn't have an ESXi 8 selection when you're creating new VMs. It has a 7, and that's what I chose. So I chose uh, ESXi 7 uh, with this particular layout, hardware layout. So about 100 gigs of RAM, uh, eight processors, 142 gig boot drive, and then four 290 gig disks. If you notice, they're all NVMe, which is important because that aligns to the type of underlying disk that I have these on. So uh, once these are all laid out, then I laid out my network and I chose six network adapters. And as you can see here, uh, each two were going to one of the uh, uh, networks that I set up in uh, Workstation. So. Uh, if you can see here on the right, this is the virtual network editor in um, Workstation. So uh, VMNet 10 aligns to a private network of 10.0.10.0, right? Uh, 11 to the 11 network and 13 to the 13 network. All this networking is private. None of it is bridged or goes outside of it. Everything stays within it. So these are all private networks that you set up in the virtual network editor in a workstation. In fact, you should probably do that first before you make your shells, right? So that you actually have these network choices to choose here, right? So do this first, get your networking set up. Once it's done, build out your shells. I chose ESXi 7, though I'm installing ESXi 8. That's fine. Chose 7 for now and built these three VMs with the ESXi on them. Now, each one of these ESXi hosts, when I built them out, I said, you know, host one, I want you to go to my Optane disk one. And the Optane disk is 1.5 terabyte. Optane is a disk made by Intel. They're super fast. Uh, U.2 platform. And I have actually have them plugged directly into the PCIe buses. So each host has a dedicated disk, which is important, especially for throughput and performance, right? With Workstation, the real key to it is a lot of RAM, <laughs> a lot of cores, and uh, a lot of uh, disk not spinning disk, SSDs, NVMEs like M.2s or U.2 like Optane disks. If you have it, have that type of setup, you'll be able to do a lot more with it, right? Uh, if you're limited on RAM or limited on these other things, uh, it doesn't perform as well, especially if you're doing spinning disk, it won't perform well at all. 
Um, so uh, get these disks, uh, get these VMs all laid out onto separate disks was really key to the success here. So three hosts, three Optane drives. Now, the other thing I did was I made a brand new VM for VCSA. And I actually set, set that onto an, an, a two terabyte NVMe disk. I also set up a, a Active Directory controller, um, and I also put that on the same NVMe disk. This is really the first one that uh, you want to get uh, installed is your Active Directory uh, settings, right? In this case, I set it up with uh, AD, uh, DNS, DHCP, and a remote access server. Uh, the remote access server allows it to kind of act almost like a gateway for all the systems so that it can route out to the internet. So if, uh, you know, this HCI bench here wants to go out to the internet, it would get the address, DHCP address from here, and it could route out through uh, this Active Directory controller to gain uh, access to the internet, things like that. So once this is up and established, you have all your DNS names and things like that going, uh, you know, get your VCSA set up, then install the uh, ESXi8 on the three shells you created, and you should be uh, good to go. Uh, for me, the network's kind of divided up as I'm using the 10 network for uh, ESXi management and VMs. And yeah, I know I could probably separate those out at some point. But for now, what I'm doing, I don't need a separate network for, for just dedicated to VMs. I will eventually. But for now, it's okay where it's at. And I'm going to leave it that way. Um, the ESA network is all for the vSAN backend which is the green network here. And then whatever was left over, I stuck on the purple network, which was, uh, you know, fault tolerance, um, V motion, uh, replication, uh, things of that nature, right? It was all on the third network. We kind of split those all out. And that aligns to these three port groups that I've set up over here. Each one of them maps uh, to two network adapters. So for example, the nested FT vMotion replication network uh, maps down and goes through adapters five and six. Now the load balancing, a logarithm I chose uh, in here was um, uh, redundancy, right? So there's a redundant link that's based on physical NIC load is what I chose for each one of these pairs. And that seems to be working pretty good. So that is basically the general setup that I've done. So let's go into workstation and take a quick peek at it now. So we'll jump over to AD222, uh, which is kind of the uh, the VM here set based on uh, Windows um, uh, Server 2022. Uh, and then you can see here, here's the nested uh, data center, the cluster I've set up, and here's actually the three hosts that I've got going as well, right? Uh, so one thing you might notice is it moves fairly well as it's going from click to click here, right? I can uh, bring up information relatively fast, especially if you think about what it's doing is all of these VMs right here that are running, right? Uh, are all nested on one workstation instance. And then inside of these three VMs right here, I right now have about 12 different VMs running for HCI benchmark. Now they're not super active, right? They're just kind of there right now, but they just got done uh, doing a performance benchmark on this system. And we actually got some pretty good results. This is how I set up the benchmark. Once you get HCI Bench installed, uh, I just chose the uh, uh, easy run, right? It blow, it sets up uh, 12 VMs and tests it for about, uh, about a half hour, 40 minutes, somewhere in there, and gives you an output uh, with some meaningful information. In this case, it kind of rated this deployment uh, as uh, 8,000 IOPS, which is it bad for uh, you know a Windows 11 box <laughs> running workstation and then nested uh, ESXi host with those VMs actually per performing this load? There's a lot of layers to this onion, so to speak. So for it to produce uh, 8,000 IOPS, I'm okay with that. I haven't made any adjustments to Windows 11 or anything else underneath the hood to try to adjust it or make it faster. And maybe if I run into a bottleneck with it, then maybe at that point, then I'll, I'll think about changing it. But for now, I'm happy with uh, what it's doing and it seems to be very performant. So let's take a look here. Um, let's go into the actual data store. You can see all the settings here. I set the ESA default policy to RAID 5, right, across those three hosts, which is super nice. Then our networking is uh, pretty simple, nothing too complicated, right? So nested everything uh, is what I decided to call this particular switch. And then we set up our six uh, uh, uplinks for the, the three hosts, and then our three port groups, which go to the host there. 
But other than that, that's about all the settings I've done on so far. I'm looking forward to uh, adding a bunch of new VMs here real shortly. Uh, maybe some uh, vRealize or ARIA applications like uh, Operations and uh, Log Insight, uh, things of that nature. Eventually, maybe getting NSX layered in here and continue to push this uh, system to see how far it can actually go. But so far, so good. I just wanted to give you kind of a quick look at what I've been working on here. Uh, kind of getting through all the little things and it's been uh, it's been a really great experience getting it going and if you have any questions uh, please by all means uh, leave those comments below I do read them and uh, try to respond to folks that post up and as always don't forget to hit subscribe take care everyone we'll see you bye, -bye.